Welcome back to Game on Vegas. Boy, it is a real pleasure to welcome to our studio our next guest on the show. She's an actress, model, sportscaster, and a pioneer. We welcome Jane Kennedy to the show. Thank Jane, thank, thank you, you so much. much. Chris. I thank really you. appreciate thank that. You. So, coming into the studio, I know, boy, you're a legend. I mean, when I grew up, I watched the NFL, and you were on there every week, and, and, and then the, the movies, the, uh, the modeling, and so forth. I mean, what a terrific life you had. Thank you. It's been amazing, and, you know, you could never dream it. Um, but my mom always told me, you know, and my dad supported it, you know, that if you can see it, you can achieve it. Um, and so for them, since you couldn't see it on television, you didn't see African Americans on television very often um, back then. And as a matter of fact, most of the time we just had a black and white TV. It's only three channels, so there wasn't that much opportunity. But my parents taught me that we're going to, you can see leadership within the family, you can see setting goals within the family unit, and you can see achieving those goals within the family unit. You know, when you start out liking sports, you were mentioning back, e even before women really played a lot of sports, you were a cheerleader that kind of got you onto the bus to, <laughs> to be around sports, is that right? Because you I wanted always to go, loved sports. I wanted to go to all the games, and the only way I could do it, because I was pre-Title IX, uh -huh. so there were no real sports programs for women um, when I was in high school. Uh, I competed in a lot of other areas, um, and then I was in the Junior Olympics when I was in junior high. Um, long jump, I think, was my competition, and softball throw, which they don't even do anymore. But uh, yeah, it was, it was very interesting. The first thing that I started doing in the industry is I was a model for the make company. And um, it was a large department store, so I don't know, a lot of people may not know the make company, but in our community, it was the store, you know, and it wasn't until I was a senior in high school that we got a mall. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, okay. you know, and make company was the biggest store in, in the mall. So I ended, ended up um, um, winning the Miss Ohio t crown, the first African American to win the crown, and um, representing the state at the uh, National Miss USA in uh, Miami Beach and uh, placing in the top 10. And from there, didn't you, 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 you met a DJ, moved to LA, yes. and, and became a star. I mean, talk about that experience. But we just got in the car, a gold Pontiac Le Mans, <laughs> <laughs> and we drove cross country, and it took us a whole month to get there, because we wanted to see everything on the way. Um, and the very first thing I remember is I pulled into, um, I was in the back seat, and my husband was driving the car, and he said, wake up, wake up, we're here. We were pulling off the, the um, off-ramp, and there was a street sign that said Hope Street, and I took that as a sign. So um, within two weeks, I had an audition, um, an interview with a choreographer on Rona Martin's Laugh-In, and um, so I went, I took my lunch, my lunch break from a law office that I had just started working in as a, as a receptionist. And I said, I'm going to go all the way across town. I'm going to lose my job. I'm not going to get back in time. But I went, and I, it, there was no studio out in, so it was just in a chair. And a guy runs over to me, and he grabs me, and he says, um, can you dance? And I said, yeah. He threw me on the set, and he said, when the light goes on, you dance, and when it goes off, you freeze. Wait for it to come back on again. <laughs> and um, finished that. He said, can you come back next week? And I said, yeah. He said, can you be a regular on the show? And it was George Schlatter, the producer of the show. Oh, terrific. And that kind of started, I mean, I was going through, you were on Sanford and Son, The Love yes. Boat, Rockford Files, Chips, so many TV shows. How, was, how, how did that kind of transition to sports for you? Um, it was really interesting because when I heard about the opening on the NFL Today, the, um, uh, I asked my agent to submit me, and he said, no, they want a journalist, and um, they're not going to hire a black. That's everything that I heard, and I said, submit me anyway. I, I know the sport. I love it. You know, I grew up in sports. My father wanted um, an athlete, and he had five girls before he finally had a son. Um, but, you know, I just, I was determined to get some type of option, but my agent wouldn't submit me. And um, they submitted a list of 10 candidates, all of which were turned down. Um, they submitted another list, turned down, another list, turned down. And I kept begging them, put me on the list, and they wouldn't. So I ended up calling Jim Brown, and um, Jim Brown said, you have to talk to Bob Stenner. Bob Stenner was a field producer for the CBS games. And he says, talk to George Wallach, who manage, manages Bruce Jenner. And back then, Bruce Jenner was, you know, high uh, cotton. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I went to George Wallach, and he said, I think you'd be great. He said, but if you get the job, I want to manage you. And I said, fine, you know. And luckily enough, I got the job. And um, then my agent said they wanted their commission.
and we ended up in, in litigation. They won, so I had to pay them anyway, even though they wow. refused to submit me. So, you know, there was never anything beneficial for me within that industry. You were on the cover of a ton of magazines also. Yes. Very interesting. What's your favorite one? What, which one maybe helped you the most? Or, or what, yeah, which one was your favorite? Um, see, the, the thing about that is, again, you know, being an African-American in the industry at that particular time, they would just come right out and tell you, we don't put blacks on the cover of magazines. I mean, I look at what's happening today in the industry. There's so many options to pursue your career and to maintain success. Um, back then, there weren't those options. There were no mentors. Um, people would absolutely tell you, we're not hiring blacks. You're never going to be doing this. Wow. So the very first one, which I had opposed doing, which caused a, um, there was a lot of uproar in the African-American community when I did the cover of Playboy magazine. But um, I had just done a movie. I had been on the NFL for two years. And um, uh, the movie Body and Soul was going to be released uh, within the next couple of months. And Hugh Hefner said, I believe in Jane. And he said, and if there's anything that we can do to help Jane, we should. She should be on the cover of a magazine. She should not have all these magazine publishers telling her that blacks can't do this. And so because of him believing in me and the purpose of it, I agreed to do it. And back then, I never thought of it. Any of my work is, I didn't even like it when people call me a, um, a role model. You know, I, I just wanted to do the work. I just enjoyed doing the work. Yeah. But, you know, like, in retrospect, I can look back and I say, okay, I do see that. And um, a guy um, friended me on Facebook. I didn't know who he was, but he sent, he said, I went to the Smithsonian Museum of African American History and Culture, and look what I found. And there was a photo of me on the wall. I, I, I was overwhelmed. Um, and next, right next to the photo, it was the photo on the, in, on the desk of the NFL today. Nat King Cole, Diana Ross and the Supremes, Diane Carroll, and Nichelle Nichols from Star Trek. And it talked about the doors that we opened. And um, there was a quote next to my photo, and it was by Oprah Winfrey. And she said, Gail King and I used to sit on the floor watching television and every time you came on, we would jump up and down and scream, color people on TV, color people on TV. Yeah. And she said it made us believe that we could. Wow, great story. And then, you have, and then your, your next book, uh, Plain Jane. It's my autobiography. autobiography. Yeah. Is it's it Plain called, Jane? It's called Plain Jane. Yeah. I don't want to ghostwrite it. I wanted, to, I wanted it to be me. I wanted it to be a reflection of who I was and um, how I felt about issues and how I felt about what Hollywood like, was like back then, um, and how that impacts Hollywood today. Yeah. And so I wanted it to be a full rap story, um, and I just wanted to do it right. So we have that that we're still working on um, in terms of getting some of the things that I didn't feel like I wanted to talk about. Um, my manager saying, nope, we gotta, we gotta talk about that. And then another thing, for instance, um, I bought my first home when I was 21. And I had moved into an all-wet neighborhood in Pasadena. And um, the first day that I moved in, there were, uh, my mailbox, there was a, uh, the flag was up, and there was an, a loaf of banana nut bread from one of the neighbors. And I was so thrilled, you know, it, was, it made me feel warm and cuddly and yeah. cozy. And I'm home, you know, it's my first home that I bought, I bought by myself, you know. And um, very next day, I woke up and there was a cross burning on the front oh. yard. Unbelievable. That's, um, that's just unbelievable. Yeah. So um, the editor that got all the little things right missed that. She had taken that out. And I said, why did you take that out? She says, it's no, it's no relevance. I said, are you kidding me? A cross burning on your front yard, that's very relevant. Yeah. Somebody once said, no other success can compensate for failure in the home. Boy, you've taken that to heart. Terrific mom, your kids. I hear stories where you're, you're compassionate, you're loving, you're fun. You, you were a coach, you were a manager of their yes. teams. I mean, you stepped away from all the limelight to care for your family. I mean, I guess that word family 
meant everything to you. It did. It meant absolutely everything to me. That's what I got from my mom and dad, and that's what I wanted to give to my children, which is one of the reasons I stepped back. The last time I worked full-time in the industry, I was only home 28 days out of the entire year. I didn't want to raise a family that way. So I wanted my kids to be a product of who I was, not a babysitter. Um, I know a lot of women that can do that. I'm not saying that it's wrong. I couldn't do it. Yeah. It didn't fit me. And so I was there for all of their basketball games, soccer games, baseball games, track and field events, swimming meets. They did everything. None of them went into drama. <laughs> but, um, and, then, and my daughter's, um, my daughter's soccer team, I became, I coached her for two years and then I managed for eight years highly competitive soccer programs. And they compete all around the United States. And um, we were invited to go to the National Collegiate um, Championship um, where they have the satellite fields around the stadium and they have like a showcase for the collegiate um, coaches to view some of the upcoming talent. And um, we came in first. Oh, congratulations. My, my team came in first. Congratulations. Janie, it has been an absolute pleasure to have you in. Thank I you. appreciate that so much for your Thank time you. and everything. And good Thank luck. You. Good luck with the book. Good luck with the future. Thank you so That's much. There Thank she you is. so much. I've got a lot on my plate and I'm ready for it. Oh, perfect. Yeah, there she is, Jane Kennedy. Thank appreciate you. Appreciate her coming in. Hey, Thank still ahead on Game.